Is Verizon, ticker symbol VZ, a good stock to buy now? Welcome to Global Value. Today, we're performing a fundamental analysis of Verizon using Warren Buffett's investing framework. We'll look at six key financial metrics before we figure out three different fair values to understand what Verizon is worth in today's stock market. Plus, I'll share two special bonuses that could be the deciding safety factors when adding Verizon stock to your portfolio. Right now, Verizon trades for $41.05 per share. In its last day of trading, it's up 0.49% alone. From August of 2023, Verizon stock is up 23%. They beat the market for most of this time and have kept pace in 2024. However, in the last five years, it's a different story with Verizon declining by 32%. In the last decade, Verizon stock is down 18%. They haven't beat the market since 2016. When we go back before the global financial crisis, Verizon stock is only up 17%. That's just 1% compounded annually. Thankfully, there's more for shareholders. Today, Verizon pays a market-beating 6.5% dividend yield. These returns would be added to the gains in their stock, and Verizon's more or less kept pace over this time. Starting with metric number one, we want Verizon's average returns on capital to be greater than 14%. You can think of these returns like your form when you're in the gym lifting weights. A company wants to deliver great value just like you want to use great form. Unfortunately for Verizon, their returns on capital have declined in each of these five years. This has dropped from 13.5% in 2019 to just 9.5% in 2023. That's not good for the business, as what was a stable and steady company is seeing increased competition amid higher spending. Overall, Verizon earns 11.5% average returns on capital, and these are down from the benchmark we wanted. Because of this, it's an X to start things off for Verizon. Now, what does Verizon really do? Wireless services account for around 70% of Verizon Communications' total sales and nearly all of its operating income. The firm serves around 93 million postpaid and 21 million prepaid phone customers following the acquisition of TrackPhone via its nationwide network. This makes it the largest U.S. wireless carrier. Fixed-line telecom operations include local networks in the Northeast, which reach around 29 million homes and businesses. These serve around 8 million broadband customers. Verizon also provides telecom services nationwide to enterprise customers, often using a mix of its own and other carrier networks. Now, is Verizon growing or not? In metric number two, we want to see sales, earnings, and free cash flow growth. In the last five years, Verizon, compared to its competitor AT&T, has performed a lot better. While AT&T sales are down 33%, Verizon sales have grown by around 2%. That's not much to write home about, but it is still growth. At the same time, however, the company's earnings are down. This is due to $7.1 billion of restructuring and impairment charges that it took last year. Their free cash flows, however, are up by 8%, which is great to see. Overall, though, because their earnings are down, it's an X on metric number two. Now, who owns Verizon? Verizon stock is in the portfolio of five super investors, and this is led by the Mars and Power Growth Fund, Hillman Value Fund, and Daniel Loeb from Third Point Capital. Warren Buffett is a former Verizon shareholder, having two positions in the company, first in 2014 and exiting in 2016, before buying again in the third quarter of 2023 and then losing money as he exited in the second quarter of 2022. Verizon was a top 10 holding for Buffett before he sold out and likely put the proceeds into Chevron. Next in our third metric, we want earnings per share growth. This helps us look at Verizon like an individual shareholder. Due to the company's impairment and restructuring charges, their earnings are down in their last 12 months. At the same time, Verizon has diluted shareholders by 2% in the last five years. With their earnings down and more shares outstanding, their earnings per share are down even faster than either of these alone. It's another X on metric number three. Things aren't looking so hot for Verizon right now, but does the company have what it takes to turn it around in the second half of our analysis? Why don't we find out? In metric four, we want free cash flow per share growth. This is similar but even more important because free cash flows are the lifeblood of any business. Verizon's done a better job with their free cash flow than their earnings, although both of these have been around the same mark in most of these years. 2021 and 2022 were the exceptions, however. This comes from the company's huge $47.5 billion purchase in 2021 for the 5G mid-band spectrum auction. That's a core part of the company's 5G strategy going forward and an absolutely massive cost. 
Still, while that was down majorly in 2021, their free cash flows are up over this time. In fact, in their last 12 months, these slightly outpaced their dilution, and this means even though it looks like it's down up to 2023, it's actually our first check on metric number four. Now, why don't we look at Verizon's dividends? Right now, Verizon pays a huge market-beating 6.53% dividend yield. Verizon's grown their dividends 19 years straight. But are their dividends safe and can they keep growing? We'll find these out. We'll find this out in our bonus where we want their dividends to be covered by their free cash flows. Here, Verizon's done an all right job supporting their dividends using their cash flows in three of these five years. They didn't support them in 2021 or 2022. Then they cut things close in 2023 and they're cutting things even closer in 2024. Verizon's dividend growth has slowed in recent years and they grew by just 1.92% last year. Their dividends may come under pressure in the near future, so it's something to definitely look out for and not chase dividend yield here. Still though, they do technically support their dividends and this is a check on our bonus. Now let's look at their balance sheet too. Warren Buffett wants companies that can grow, earn high returns, and don't need a lot of debt. That's why in metric number five, we want their net debt to be below the sum of their free cash flows in the last five years. Verizon looked different as a business in 2020 when Buffett was investing in the company. In that year, they had $130 billion in net debt. Since then, they've added on more than $47 billion worth. Their cash flows have actually gone down from that peak in 2020, and they've been lumpy over this time as well. While they're technically up from where they were at in 2019, they haven't kept pace with the same rate the company's added net debt. Verizon's only brought in $93.5 billion in the last five years. That just supports a little more than half of their debt position, and this is a big X on metric number five. This could be a red flag, as you need to dig into the company's filings to understand how their debt is structured. Still, because of their high amount of fixed assets, Verizon functions almost more like a real estate business. They're able to lever these assets up by quite a bit, so it's not like all hope is lost for the company. Before we look at what Verizon's worth, it's time for our second safety bonus. Warren Buffett's teacher and the father of value investing, Ben Graham, wanted to see a current ratio bigger than one and a half times. This guideline, if you're picking individual stocks, is a key safety ratio for a company being able to pay its bills. Verizon hasn't been above this mark in any of the last five years. They were close to it in 2020, but more normally, they're only around a 0.6 or a 0.7% current ratio. There are structural reasons in their business why this might not be as much of a concern for the company. Still, it's less than ideal and it is an X on our safety bonus. Both Verizon and its peer AT&T are off on both a long-term and a short-term look on the business. That could spell trouble for shareholder returns in the future. Now, what is Verizon worth? The big metric of them all, metric number six, is our first valuation. We want Verizon's average cash flows divided by their enterprise value to give us a yield greater than 5%. This matches the historical yield from the S&P 500 and is above the 10-year treasury currently. Right now, Verizon has a $349 billion enterprise value. This looks at the company like a private business by adding their market cap and their net debt together. In an average year over this time, Verizon brings in $18.7 billion of free cash flow. When we divide that by their enterprise value, it gives us a 5.4% average yield. Verizon also has a 4.9% three-year free cash flow yield, and in their last 12 months, they brought in $19.3 billion of free cash flow and have a 5.5% current yield. Free cash flows can be lumpy, which is why we're looking at an average, and their average yield is above the benchmark we wanted. This is a check on metric number six for Verizon. Now, don't just run out and go buy the business. We still have two more valuations to look at before we get to our fair value at the end of the video. Next, we'll use a DCF model to project Verizon's growth into the future. We'll take the company's average cash flows and assume that these will decline at 1.5% in the next decade. Then in the following decade, we'll assume this decline is 3% annually. After that, we'll add in the company's tangible book value. Then let's say we wanted a market-beating 15% rate of return, which is what Warren Buffett looks for. With lower business predictability and today's valuations, it looks like a fair value for Verizon is around $32 per share. That's down from their current stock price. Keep in mind, despite its recent declines, Verizon's trading above its historical EV to EBITDA ratio in the past decade. This is a rougher ballpark, but it's what telecom companies are typically priced on. When we look at past multiples and future analyst estimates for the business, our third valuation comes in at around $40 per share. That's slightly lower than Verizon stock price right now. Verizon stock started off strong through the 1980s into the late 1990s and early 2000s during the telecom boom. 
Since then, their stock has been a roller coaster ride for investors, and it's down in the last decade. Now, we've looked at the numbers, but these just reflect the qualities of company that Warren Buffett looks at to make his investment decisions. Next, we'll explore these qualities through a long and a short thesis, and we'll start with a long thesis first. Number one, a focus on network strength over the past 15 years has put Verizon in an enviable position. Its wireless network provides the broadest coverage in the industry, and its reputation with customers is sterling. Number two, with the largest customer base in the U.S., Verizon Wireless is the most efficient carrier in the industry. It delivers far better profitability than its rivals, although this has been increasingly under pressure. And number three, Verizon is relentlessly pushing forward in its core business. They're expanding their fiber optic network and deploying 5G wireless technology. But things aren't all positives for Verizon. Let's look at a short thesis as well. Number one, wireless technology is dramatically lowering the cost to build and maintain a network. Rival carriers have rapidly deployed new spectrum and technology to add coverage and capacity. Verizon's network leadership may be a thing of the past. Number two, Verizon's fixed line business is a disaster. It earns minimal profits and it faces years of high costs necessary to support declining revenue. And number three, Verizon's balance sheet isn't the fortress it once was. Paying down debt will limit strategic flexibility and shareholder returns. Legal liabilities tied to lead sheath cable could add another headache. Now let's put everything together for Verizon. In our fundamental review, we learned the company goes two for six on the select six analysis. They earn slightly above average returns on capital, but these have been declining in the past five years. At the same time, the company has just slightly grown and they've taken a number of restructuring and impairment charges. On top of this, they're seeing increased competition and Verizon's added a lot of debt in the past five years, including making major purchases for their mid-band spectrum. Still, Verizon brings in a ton of free cash flow and these potentially look attractive compared to their enterprise value. For investor returns, Verizon pays a market-beating dividend yield. Remember, this isn't financial advice. When we put together Verizon's numbers and their business qualities, today it looks like a fair value for the company is only around $39 per share. That's just slightly down from their current stock price, and Verizon looks to be around fairly valued. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to check out our Patreon for even more free fair values. You can even support Global Value if you want to.